Here go right here. This is exclusive. Mom arrested after being jumped by teens at a Walmart. Mom jumped by teens at store gets arrested. And you're going to see how unhinged and unprofessional this cop is in handling the situation. Exclusive. A mother says she was jumped, physically assaulted by three individuals inside of a Walmart. Police officer gets irritated with her and decides to lock her up. And, and she didn't keep in mind as well. This woman, you're going to see, did not assault this officer, did not backlash or make any threat. She was simply exercised her First Amendment of freedom of speech. She, Her freedom of speech was showing her, her displeasure and telling those that you ain't doing nothing about them. I was attacked. I am a victim here. You know, and she becomes a victim not once, but twice. You're going to see it. Check this out. Sides to lock her up as she's waiting for her dad to pick her up. We have the video. I'll explain on the other side. Here it is. Here it is. You know what they're going to do, man? I don't know. You know what they're going to do? You ain't going to do nothing. You better go sit your little ass down somewhere. That's the last thing you need to do. You know what they're going to do? You know what they're going to do? Come here, let me explain something to you. The last girl that got jumped out here at Walmart that said she was going to catch her one-on-one, -on -one, got a bullet dead to her chest. Mm -hmm. And she's six feet under right now. Yep. So if you want your one, go out there and get it and get yourself killed. Do what? Come here, there. I got something for you to hear. Come here. Come here. Come here. How old are you? How old are you? Yep, I got something for you to hear. Y'all not gonna, y'all see, y'all think it's a game around here. Come on. Oh, this and they call my dad. I don't care. He can come on down to the police department and burn you out. Yep. Because I promise you, I ain't the one. Can you let go? Yep, when you get in this car. Get in this car. You better get in this car. She going to jail if this one come back. That ain't got nothing to do with the fight. Yeah, she's 21. She's going to jail for disorderly conduct. Ain't got nothing to do with the fight. And she made no threats. Didn't retaliate at all. She was just simply exercising her First Amendment of freedom of speech. She was telling the officer how she how she felt after that cop did absolutely nothing at all. Then he had not ball to say, oh, the last time a woman got took a, a fight one-on-one, -on -one, she got a bullet in her. Like, I mean, I think he is trying to progress the narrative. Like, if you do anything, if you take vision on your own, you're gonna be you're gonna be right in the lightning. You're gonna be a bullet on you. Like this, like this cop didn't give two shits. He had zero fucks given. He didn't care, so he's gonna justify. He didn't care about yeah. You know, he said, "Oh, you feel about these, about the murder getting jumped." So what he's gonna do? His feelings gonna butt hurt, and he's gonna justify by restoring the peace by arresting her with disorderly conduct. She's victimized two times. Two times. Minutes. Let's put up the picture of this mother. This happened. In Clarksdale, Mississippi. Clarksdale, Mississippi. According to the mother, she was attacked by three teenagers inside of a Walmart. That's her with her one-year-old. Her name, the mother, her name is Roretta Hawkins. Roretta Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins was visiting the Walmart in Clarksdale on June 27th to pick up baby items for her daughter. And to meet her brother, who actually works at that Walmart. She was on the phone with her father. In the front of the store, she says three older teens started to laugh at her and she says, she confronted them, are you laughing at me? Roretta says the teen said no, she left for the baby aisle, but the teens followed. Roretta's brother, Javier McDonald, who works at the Walmart, corroborated the entire story saying, Roretta left the initial interaction to go to the baby aisle. He's looking at the teens talking to the police right there, okay? In the baby aisle, 
Loretta says one of the teens grabbed her hair and pulled her to the ground, while two others joined in on the attack. She later learned one was 18 years of age. Was she complained to the police? She says they would not file a report calling the incident retaliation. Next, the Clarksdale police arrested her for disorderly conduct. Now, keep that up. Keep Let's that take a look at it. Here we go. Report up. The question I had when I first heard this story, is there some wink and nod to not put on record what happened inside of that Walmart? Why did he ignore the attack when obviously in the video he's aware of it? There's more. Hawkins told Indisputable, and I quote, my first amendment was violated. Sure was. He arrested me for saying something. Exactly, and I said it. Yeah, she was exercised her First Amendment of freedom of speech. She was telling, she was giving him displeasure, wonder why he wouldn't take a report or make an arrest on those, on those teenagers that attacked her. She didn't provoke the fight. She just went up to her side, what? I said, you laughing at me? And they said, no, but they followed her and attacked her. He, she didn't threaten the cop or anything like that. You have the right to, to, to exercise your freedom of speech to the cops. What if you, I mean, even if you go out to the car and say, you're a fat fucking tub of shit. That's your right. That's your right. When I didn't make a direct threat, I was calling my dad to pick me up. The cop said in the affidavit, I was real loud and I was trying to fight. Bullshit. Bull fucking drop, shit. But not before she paid $1,500 to a lawyer and $150 to a bail bondsman. All right. Uh, she is also. She also says the Clarksdale police officer. Uh, let's put him up. L. Jamaro Peters, seen here. L. Jamal Peters. Her phone. Whoa. After the incident, Loretta says he's a large man, and I wasn't going to fight the police. He didn't need to be forceful with nobody. People think you're not supposed to stand up for yourself, but I always stand up for myself. So I'm glad. Fuck yeah. Let's put up the chief. Chief of Police, Clarksdale, Mississippi Finest, Robbie Lindley. No one from the department returned Indisputable's calls or emails or comment on this incident. Listen, we played this game plenty of times. How many times have I sit there said, you know, you got finding benchmark says you don't have any rights when you're you know, in your interaction with the cops or if you're stopped by them or you're detained by that, even if you're like, it's like, you have your rights. They did nothing. She was attacked. She was a victim. Then they decided to arrest her again and make her a victim. All because she exercises her freedom of speech. She has rights. You have rights. I always tell people, use them against the cops because day and age, they're going to make you feel like you don't have any rights. Well, you do. With police department. Now, Chief, let's put the Chief back up. Now, Chief, uh, this is your first time tangling with me. There needs to be a statement of affirmative or at least investigative action happening to this incident. This officer, obviously, is ready for a review. And the citizen who was harassed has rights. You are a lawman. Stand up for it. We shall see. Ben, insane. Woman, young woman, a victim twice because a cop got upset and decided to just lock her up for something so frivolous, the courts threw it out immediately. Thoughts? Yeah, this is just like, this is just another one of those stories where police officers feel entitled, right? They, they feel entitled to an extreme degree of power. And look, Elected officials are to blame for this. Like, let's let's be 100% real. Because not only do you have both sides of the aisle... Con you know, and that first of all, and that, no, that cop was butthurt. And second of all, that cop was going to have... He was just going around saying, oh, I'm not going to have you. But you get cops out there, they're going to arrest people and make up charges that go. All in order to maintain the peace and order. And that's exactly what it was, right there. 
Because she was shooting her mouth up. He said, I'm not going to have that. She's just disrupting, all this like that. So I'm going to lock her up and throw her back in my squad card in order to me to order restore the order and the peace. That is a blatant bullshit bunk move. Constantly praising police officers like they're universally, unquestionably heroes and not like examining the role of police yeah, in like the United Brian, States of America. Yeah, like Brian says that you Valley Cops are heroes. When stuff like this cowards. happens, they always just sit back and do nothing and wait for police departments to deal with it internally. They trust the system to function internally because they don't want to take responsibility. And this yep. is actually something that the United States does very, very effectively, where we separate authority and responsibility. Right. Mm. By separating authority and responsibility from each other, you can create these scenarios where, oh, it's just this one bad police officer. He's the person who's responsible. We'll we'll leave it to the, the institution to, like, deal with, like, you know, you know, like bench when we sit there, say, oh, oh, uh, say, oh, those officers in Memphis say, oh, that's only six out of six hundred sixty five thousand four hundred thirty two or something like that. I can't remember the name, but I. The exact number, but he's 665,000. He said, oh, that's only six out of 665,000. Well, that's where it starts. It starts with the six, or it starts with that one. Then it grows to 20. Then it goes to 50. Then it goes to 100 bad cops that in their, their jurisdiction. You know, all of the, the problems of, like, punishment and stuff like that. And so elected officials say, well, yeah, I mean, I'm the one that, like, give them a budget and, like, votes in place the policies and procedures that they have to, like, run by. But, like... You know, I don't really want to do that because if I get too involved, then all of a sudden I'm to blame, except for you are already to blame, right? Like, if you're an elected official, you are actively creating this environment. And look, the harsh reality is there's a lot of elected officials that are just legitimately terrified of police departments. But when elected officials are terrified of police departments and they're too afraid to put in place, like, basic reforms or regulations or even, dare I say, put in place some real civilian accountability when elected officials are too afraid to call for things like that with defunding police departments, taking their budget and putting into things that actually help prevent crime. Uh, then the people are afraid of police officers, right? And then the people have to deal with the violence from police officers and just this arbitrary harassment and, like, wrongful arrests and all of these things that come down. And so, like, fundamentally, like... Well, this police officer is, is to blame for this, and there's obviously a culture of this across the country and specifically within this police department as well. The elected officials also have responsibility, both at the state, local, federal level, all of it, because fundamentally there has not been any real substantial effort to change the system. And like fundamentally, like why do Democrats not talk about the fact that the whole entire war on drugs was very explicitly like started with the aim of harassing black and brown folks right. in the United States of America. That was the whole purpose. And yet somehow talking about the war on drugs is just like unallowed for most elected Democrats, just unallowed. Sure, they might talk about descheduling things like cannabis, but the larger war on drugs effort, the police apparatus, the surveillance apparatus that exists in support of that larger system, they never question it. Why is that the sacred cow that we are keeping when it is very clearly white supremacist is in its origin? And that is what's really, really infuriating. So I, it's we keep seeing stories like this and every day it is heartbreaking and it is rage-inducing because so many Democrats are too cowardly to speak up against it. So well put. So well put. Um, and you said something really powerful. They want the authority, but not the responsibility. And that's it right there. You hit it. Knocked it out the park. Now, for those who are watching, if there's a corrupt cop, and I'm talking to police officers, you're a good cop. And that's the thing. People, yeah, people want people want the power, but they don't want to take responsibility that comes with it as well. And that's a good point. But there, that said, I'm out here, my job. Peace out.